Hey everybody, this is Rothbard's Disciple here and I'm bringing you guys a video on Bitcoin. This one's going to irritate a lot of people. Um, if you've watched my videos, you'll know I don't give a shit about irritating people. Um, I really don't care. <laughs> I, I, I don't know how to explain it any other way than that. Um, but uh, yeah, I've always hated Satoshi Nakamoto and there's a real reason for it. So this is going to be split up into three slides. Uh, First slide is just going to be on why I hated Satoshi Nakamoto. The second slide is how I plan on becoming Satoshi Nakamoto. Um, and a lot of people are going to hear that and be like, you can't become Satoshi Nakamoto. It's like, the, the one thing i got to say to you guys is, one, I absolutely can become Satoshi Nakamoto. I'm not saying it's highly likely. I'm just saying it's, it's not really that hard to do. Because Satoshi, their original Satoshi Nakamoto, the real Satoshi Nakamoto, wasn't the real Satoshi Nakamoto because he made a mistake in Bitcoin that incentivized him to make a lot of mistakes and now you know we're not even sure if Bitcoin will exist like Bitcoin Cash could potentially win but Satoshi might have already killed Bitcoin from day one and it all has to do with the block reward so a lot of people in Bitcoin like to say that the ideal inflation rate is zero percent if you think that you're a communist okay plain and simple you can't sit here and tell me you know better than the market then you know what the best rate of inflation for money is uh, rather than relying on a market like you're I, 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 the stupidity of the crypto markets is unbelievable and it's almost unbearable to me and this is one of the, th the points that really just blows my mind when people say oh I know for a fact the ideal inflation rate is zero percent okay if you think that one you're an idiot because no you don't know but two you're a communist so I sh really shouldn't be thinking or I really shouldn't really you know be paying attention to anything you say because you obviously don't have much of an understanding of economics okay you can't sit here and tell me what the ideal inflation rate is and tell me you're not a communist okay so if we look at actually you know the different things that uh, have acted as money in human history that's gold and silver um, you never know in any year what the inflation rate of gold and silver is going to be it's usually bet between one and five percent but you never know for a fact every goddamn year Every goddamn year, you basically know the exact inflation rate of Bitcoin. You might be off slightly, but you know the exact goddamn amount that's going to come out with each block, and you know the average time that the block should take. Okay, so this is a centrally planned, retarded idea. This idea of having a block reward where you know what the block reward is going to be. This makes no fucking sense. And a lot of times, like I... Craig sort of referenced articles on Kenneth Arrow's impossibility theorem on how, you know, you don't want to link the hash rate to the difficulty, and I think he has this backwards. I'm pretty sure Kenneth Arrow's impossibility theorem proves that Bitcoin's inflation rate doesn't work. Now, I haven't actually read Kenneth Arrow's book yet. I've been reading Sipser's Introduction to Computational Theory or whatever, or the Theory of Computation. And, you know, I'm not a computer science developer. You know, I'm not a software developer. So Sipser's book is, like, that's the limits of what I can understand. And it takes a lot of my energy. Um, and i got all these entrepreneurial things going on. So, like, I'll get around and read the book, Craig. But uh, pretty sure you have it backwards. Um, I might be wrong. But uh, just saying. Um, but the, the main reason why this block reward in, having in four years is terrible um, there's two main reasons. The first one is that it fucked up the incentives, okay? So again, if, if we talk about, the incentives we're going to talk about is the incentive for Satoshi to abandon his project, because that's what he did, and a lot of people wonder why, and the main reason is not the heat that he took, okay? Everyone talks about, like, the heat that he took, and yeah, that is a big reason, that's a big part of it, but the main reason Satoshi left is because he gained a major stake of all the Bitcoin in existence, in two fucking years, okay? Two fucking years. So what's his goddamn incentive to stay? What incentive is there? He sort of expected everyone to sort of keep Bitcoin the way it was and he'd just be able to go right off into the sunset and become the next Rothschild family for two fucking years of work? Are you kidding me? Like, God damn. Like, most people, like, when I got into Bitcoin, Satoshi had just left. And so everyone talked about Satoshi as though he was this god. And I'm an entrepreneur. And as an entrepreneur, to pretend like you, you know, oh, I'm going to work for two years and then just back out and I'm going to, you know, become the richest, most powerful man in the world. Like, that's, that's, that's the attitude of a coward to me. That is not the attitude of someone with courage. That's the attitude of a, of a coward. Okay, it takes a lot of courage to start a business, and most businesses, you work for years before you make any money. Okay, and Satoshi left after two and planned on just, like, that's it. Like, that's all he's going to do, <laughs> you know? That's it. Uh, and I guess, you know, for those people who believe Craig Wright is Satoshi, and I know Craig Wright absolutely could be Satoshi, um, I'd be surprised if he wasn't. Like, if someone else came out and it was proved that someone other than Craig was Satoshi, I'd be surprised, like... 
not like it like I would think it's impossible, but I'd, I'd just be like, wow, I never expected that. You know what I mean? But um, yeah, Craig, if <laughs> you know, I don't know. Craig's still here right now, so I like Craig, but Satoshi abandoned the project, so I hate Satoshi. You know what I mean? Um, and I don't know what Craig's involvement was after Satoshi left. I'm not entirely sure on Craig's life history. I can't say that. I don't think it was necessarily as big as you would hope for, you know, if he is the creator of Bitcoin, you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, the, the only reason to choose a block reward having in four years is to minimize your work. Because if you think about this, if you do agree that the 0% inflation rate is ideal, um, you know, one, you're a communist and you're an idiot. So I want to I wanna preface that just because, you know, I'm only entertaining this idea to have a conversation with these people who believe this. But if you think that 0% inflation is ideal, then why not have the block reward have every eight years? Because if by having it every four years, if you don't get enough throughput within like 20 years after Bitcoin was created, and you know, Bitcoin was created about 10 years ago. So if we don't get enough throughput in 10 years, Bitcoin's dead in the water. It's completely fucking dead. So why would you put such a limit on yourself? Um, or why, why would you put a limit on the time that it will take Bitcoin to succeed? Like, this makes no fucking sense. So so for anyone who thinks 0% I, inflation is ideal, why are you making, like, why are you forcing Bitcoin to have to succeed in such a short time? If Bitcoin is such a great achievement, why would you give it this window, this short window for it to succeed? It makes absolutely no sense, okay? No sense at all. And then, if again, if you compare this to things like gold, uh, the gold production... Um, it's low in the early years. Do you honestly think within the first four years when gold started being used by mankind that they produced literally half of all gold in existence? Like, that's mentally fucking retarded, guys. Anybody who thinks that, you're an idiot, okay? And I'm sorry for being a dick when I say this, but there are so many stupid things believed by so many people within the world of cryptocurrencies. And it's all communism. Like, everyone in cryptocurrencies is like, I'm an anarcho-capitalist, I'm a libertarian, I'm a voluntarist, I'm an objectivist. No. 95 plus percent of you are full-blown communists. Not full-blown communists, but I don't know. If you accept communism at all, I don't really see much of a difference. Because if you accept a little bit of communism, you end up with all of communism. So there really are very few people who are free market people within the world of cryptocurrency. So I'm going to be a dick when I say this because somebody's got to say it. But yeah, the, the, the four-year block reward, it's a completely terrible idea, and all it did is it made Satoshi abandon his project. Titans of industry don't abandon their projects, and just the fact that Satoshi abandoned his project after two years is a very good indicator that it will not succeed long term. Now, obviously, there will be a version of Bitcoin, but it will not be Satoshi's version, is what I'm saying. Not the original Satoshi, because the original Satoshi is not the real Satoshi, because... He didn't create a version of Bitcoin that can survive long term. Now, a lot of people are going to say, oh, yeah, but if you get the throughput in enough time, it will survive. And it's like, yeah, it'll survive for a time until a man like me, and again, a man, a man who is willing to go out there and, you know, actually kill all of his competitors, actually break his competitors, snap their necks. And I'm talking about this in a, in a market setting. Obviously, there's no violence in a market, so you have to have a violent mindset. You have to have a mindset of, like... The best way to succeed in the market, I would say, is have the mindset of a lion. Um, if you've ever watched documentaries on lions, like when a lion finds new territory, like a young lion when he's trying to get a pride, what, is he, what he does is he goes to uh, a pride that exists. They, like he'll go with a group of his brothers, you know, so there will be like two or three young lions, and they'll kill all the males in that pride. Then they kill all the children, um, and then... Uh, they impregnate the women okay so when you guys are talking about like what you should do from a market standpoint like how you gain dominance in a market you should think like that now obviously i'm not saying go out kill you know kill other men and then kill their kids i'm saying in a market setting uh, what you're killing for other people are their products so you go out you kill their products you kill their dreams you know all their hopes and dreams and then you establish your dominance i i very much believe in a machiavellian approach to business and so this this approach that i'm going to talk to you guys about how to kill bitcoin and how i like, like this is my my plan on how i plan on becoming satoshi now somebody could beat me to it um but i still plan on doing this and my mining operations are sort of ramping up so you know maybe in a decade i could have a, an opportunity to do this uh the one thing that uh you know people like craig wright and whoever satoshi nakamoto actually is the one thing they're lucky about is you know i told you guys i i've 
lost a bit of money through exchange hacks. I would have been, like, the, the most I've ever been worth, if you would have counted the money that got stolen from me, I would have been a multimillionaire. Technically speaking, at the prices right now, I would not I would not be a multimillionaire. But, uh, you know, you guys are lucky that some of us have, ha have run into a couple roadblocks, because otherwise I would be doing this today. I am not a little bitch who sits around and waits for permission from somebody. I just do it. So the way you use Serpa King, the way you become Satoshi Nakamoto and kill every single altcoin in existence, and I mean all of them, okay? The way you do this is you link your block reward to your difficulty, okay? And so the whole point here is that, again, without throughput, Bitcoin dies in 10 years. If your block reward is linked to your difficulty, it doesn't matter what your throughput is. Your, your coin is going to succeed. Now, obviously, with more throughput, the value of your coin ex increases exponentially. Um, but, uh, you know, you don't need throughput to exist. That's one benefit of having a block reward linked to difficulty. Now, the second thing is that even if Bitcoin gets throughput, uh, a 51% DOS attack on Bitcoin when its uh, inflation rate is zero is unbelievably easy. So let me explain that. And when I say that uh, it's easy to do a 51% DOS attack on Bitcoin, it's not actually easy. Uh, all it requires is a developer to be working with miners hand in hand, and those miners have to be committed to doing a 51% attack. And the reason why you want to do a 51% attack is because if your inflation rate uh, is greater than zero, uh, you'll be able to attack Bitcoin um, very simply when your market cap is quite a bit lower. So like, let's say your inflation rate's 5% and your market cap is half that of Bitcoins. Even if you have no throughput, your block reward on the attack coin is already much higher than the block reward for Bitcoin. And so, you know, the idea, or gold and silver kind of have long-term inflation rates of between 1% to 5%. So there's a lot of room for you to work with here. Um, and again, as long as you start pulling throughput to your side, then Bitcoin dies. So you do your 51% attack on Bitcoin, and there's nothing that the uh, Bitcoin or the people involved with Bitcoin can do to stop you because as soon as you 51% attack them, you know, if you if you have the more hash rate, like the only thing they can do to incentivize honest mine or incentivize other miners to join the mining network and mine honestly against you is to raise the fees. There's, I mean, that's all they can do. However, like let's say you were, you know. Let's say like you you started this attack coin and you from the beginning you said hey we're gonna kill Bitcoin with a 51% attack well what happens if Bitcoin tried to 51% attack you before you were ready well this doesn't matter at all actually um, and this is the really interesting thing about linking your block reward to your difficulty because let's say the all the mi miners mining Bitcoin wanted to do a 51% attack on your on your attack coin. And so they join your network and they start doing a 51% attack, okay? And so again, we're talking about just a denial of service attack. We're not talking about reversing transactions. And the whole reason why you want to do a 51% denial of service attack is because it's legal, okay? It is illegal to do a 51% denial of service attack on a decentralized cryptocurrency because it's decentralized. There's no contract that you form with anybody in the network when you mine, so you can do whatever the fuck you want, okay? So this is legal. So, but if the Bitcoin miners do a legal 51% of DOS or 51% denial of service attack, um, what happens to this coin uh, that has its block reward linked to difficulty? Well, uh, the difficulty starts to drop, and so there's more coins that start being mined. And the real interesting thing about this is because the way a 51% DOS attack works is that the attacker ignores the blocks mined by the honest miners. Well, if the attacker ignores the blocks mined by the honest miners, that means that his difficulty um, won't be as high as the difficulty on the honest chain. So even though the honest chain will get, uh, the, the DOS attack will be successful for some time, as soon as the honest chain finds one block and puts it on top of the 51% uh, attack chain, that means that there are more, there's a higher block reward on the honest chain. Okay, so even if it gets 51% attacked, it can still recover. And it like has an inherent mechanism to recover from this. Okay, so this is what I'm talking about. You need to build Bitcoin to 51% attack all other cryptocurrencies and invite them to 51% attack you. This coin is like, it's basically, uh, I know it's sort of juvenile to make this, um, you know, relationship, but it's kind of like a, in Dragon Ball Z, a Super Saiyan, like if you attack this coin, it gets stronger. If it attacks you, it gets stronger. Like no matter what this coin does, it gets stronger. It's made to kill. That's what it's for. And that's what you have to do. And that's, this is what I keep talking about. Like anybody who wants a 0% inflation rate, one, you're a communist, two, I will kill all of your coins personally. It might take me, you know, multiple decades to get there, but I will do it. And there's nothing you can do to stop me. This is basic third grade math. You know, if you can do third grade math, you understand this. Like when, when the attack going coin gets attacked, 
uh, with a 51% DOS attack, it, it gets stronger. Now, obviously, somebody's going to say, well, what if someone tries to reverse transactions because then the honest miners can't use that chain because it has uh, inaccurate records? And it's like, well, yeah, that's true, but that's true all the time. And if someone tries to do a 51% attack and reverse transactions, like on a, a cryptocurrency as major as Bitcoin, it's very hard to hide all your hash rate and hide who you are. Um, so you're legally fucked if you do that. But again, this is this is where the bread and butter, like this is where you get aggressive with cryptocurrencies and with Bitcoin is with 51% denial of service attacks because they are completely legal, 100% legal. There's nothing anybody can do to stop you from doing this because you do not have any contracts saying you have to do, you have to mine in some certain way. You can do this as much as you want. And again, if you're this Bitcoin, or if you're this attack coin, you just do this to each and every coin and you kill all the alts. You might even have something uh, with your miners, like again, if if you're the develop, like if the developers and miners are working together, and you have enough hash rate yourselves, you could even, you know, decide to switch part of your hash rate over to another hash algorithm just to kill all coins, and just to be like, look, guys, I'm I'm the big daddy of this uh, of the group of cryptocurrencies here, and all of you have to either adopt my strategy or die. Um, and that's just the way you do it. But I don't know if you'd really want to switch your hash algorithm just to kill other coins. That's probably not a good idea. Um, you, you know, you just kill the big dogs. And then uh, the other thing, too, is you'd also, if you're creating these attack coins, you'd probably create attack coins for each major hash algorithm. Um, you know, so you'd have one for, like, uh, SHA-256, which is probably the best hash algorithm, um, to be honest, just because it's the fastest. It's most widely used. Um, then you could make one for, you know the Ethereum hash or ET hash or whatever they call it. You could make one for Equihash. You could make one for Zcoins, um, MTP for Dash's, uh, I think, does Dash use, da I don't know what Dash uses, X11 maybe? And then Litecoin uses Script. So you can use all these different hash algorithms and different coins, and that can be their basic difference here. But again, this is what you do, is you kill all of these coins. You don't be nice about it. You don't go and you don't try and argue with people about it. You just say, hey, look, I'm going to kill your coin. There's nothing you can do to stop me, so suck my dick. You know what I mean? That's what you got to do. People need to start growing balls when they uh, get into this field. And if you don't, like, I don't care if people don't, because I'll just do it myself. Hey, I'll do it myself. I don't know how to code, but I start like my mining operations are starting to ramp up. And then if my mining operations ramp up enough, I'll just hire a coder or, or hire or I'll hire a developer. I don't need to be able to do it myself. I just need to be able to pay somebody to do it for me. This final slide, though, we're going to talk about some sort of uh, secondary and tertiary benefits of having your block reward based on the difficulty. Uh, the first one is the that the power switches from holders to miners. Uh, this, like, this has never made any sense for me, but most of the, like, a lot of the time, you can make a lot more money holding than you can mining, and that's insane. Um, and like, uh, why, why do holders have power anyways? You know what I mean? Like, if you increase the amount of money going to the miners, by definition, you increase the power to the miners, and that's that's a great thing. And again, if you base the block reward on the difficulty, you know, you might transfer 10 to, like, because obviously if you got into Bitcoin at the beginning, you could have made, you know, a million times uh, return on your investment. Well, if you base the block reward on difficulty, you might transfer like 100 uh, times of that over to the miners. So then the investors, you know, only make 10,000 times returns and the miners make 100 times more return on their investment. Okay. And obviously, you know, if, if you're making 10,000 times returns on your investment as a holder, you don't really give a shit. So this isn't something that's really going to matter to investors whatsoever. They'll still make massive money. It's just the miners will make slightly more as a ratio of the money being made. And this, like, I don't know why this is, would ever be seen as a negative because, uh, you know, the miners are the ones who create the network. So they're the ones who should be making the most of the money from, from Bitcoin. And that's not always the case. Um, moving forward, uh, if you do it this way, the miners and developers will likely be one group because, like I said, if you're doing this sort of uh, a strategy, you don't know what the ideal inflation rate is. You don't know what the ideal equation is. You don't know what the ideal base for your logarithmic equation is. You don't even know if it should be logarithmic. I mean, it probably should be, but you don't know that for sure. Um, so you just don't know. So that means that you have multiple forks going out. And so what you'll probably have is you'll have big miners and developers working hand in hand where you have one development or one group of developers who really believe in one like one version of this attack coin and then they'll become the big miners for it okay um, and so you need to push these together and I actually like that you know people like Craig Wright are sort of pushing towards this sort of thing and Craig Wright's sort of pushing towards a lot of you know the ideas I'm pushing in this video here but he's not doing it aggressively enough and because Bitcoin has a long-term inflation rate of zero percent like it doesn't matter um, I could kill all of Craig's work 
Uh, and I don't even have to try that hard. And it's just because I like his block reward is communist, and it's just a very poorly thought out block reward. Um, but and the other thing though too is because uh, you're you're mining so much more, or s like you're mining so many more coins. That means that the initial miners, like they will have massive amounts of coins, and they'll have a mass massive amount of coins coming in as income. And so they'll more easily be able to give bit or discounts to like big merchants or new users. So like one of the things that I don't know if you guys are aware of this, but when PayPal first came out, PayPal would pay you five dollars to set up an account, and this lost them huge sums of money huge sums of money, okay, because they just had to pay him $5. Well, imagine if you're a miner, you've been mining your attack coin since the beginning, and so, it, like, imagine you have a hoard like uh, Satoshi Nakamoto has of, like, a million Bitcoin. Well, you can just say, hey, look, if you want to get started on Bitcoin, I'll give you, you know, a dollar worth of Bitcoin in your wallet, and then you can start from there. And then just by showing people how to use that network, you know what I mean, uh, and giving them that free coin, you've just increased the... Uh, the user base of your network, and according to Metcalf's law, you know, as, a, as long as you're increasing the user base of the network, the value of that network will grow exponentially, you know, um, so that's kind of a big deal. And so you can do all these different things because the miners are making so much more money, they can do so much more with the money that they're making. Um, this next point again, failed forks can attack other hash algorithm coins. And by this I just mean, again, you don't know what the ideal block reward is. And uh, so you'll have multiple different equations for the, linking the block reward to the difficulty. And then again, you have a bunch of different hash algorithms for these coins and you can attack all of them. Okay? The real Bitcoin should kill all other cryptocurrencies. It shouldn't sit there and say, I'm the real Bitcoin. Okay, the real king doesn't need to say it's the king. It proves it. And the way you prove that you are the king, the way you prove you are Bitcoin, is you kill all other coins. Okay, you kill them. And the next point, too, is that, again, if you have miners and developers likely as one group where the developers of one certain coin are the miners for that coin or, like, a major source of mining for that coin, uh, they can't quit early because, you know, if, if you keep on, like, if your block reward's based on your difficulty and the difficulty keep, or the difficulty keeps rising, that means in order to uh, keep as much control over that network or, you know, in order to stay as wealthy as a proportion of that network, you have to keep working. You can't just quit early and then sit on your ass like Satoshi did. You can't do it. You just can't do it. And then the final thing is that you've got multiple forks, so you ensure development decentralization. This is one thing I've been really glad that Craig Wright's been sort of threatening people with is forks. Uh, forks are what ensure decentralization of your development. It's not having multiple teams. Like, that doesn't fucking matter whatsoever, basically. It's forks, okay? So you fork it, and that means you have multiple development teams. And a lot of times... You know, forks can sort of include things from one, like other forks of the same thing. Um, I don't know. All I'm saying is forks are not necessarily contentious. I don't know why this idea that forks are contentious is the way people think. Forks should be something that should be accepted by any coin. And you want your coin to fork because you don't know all, like, again, what's the ideal inflation rate? You know, you don't know. There's no fucking way to know. So if you don't fork your coin, then what's the chance that your one coin is going to get it right? If you have multiple forks, then you have multiple chances to get it right. Um, but yeah, so there's a lot of benefits of using or linking the block reward to the difficulty. Like I said, I think you need to do more than just link the block reward to the difficulty. I think you also need to include a multiplier for the initial years, and I don't know how long exactly you want this multiplier to stay, but you want that multiplier to be based on the diffusions of innovations multiplier, or like that bell curve, okay, um, and then if after that multiplier, like you want that multiplier to eventually run out, and then it's just block rewards based on difficulty, okay. Um, but anyways, I hope this video was explained some things to you. I hope it explained to you like why I hate Satoshi, uh, the flaws in what Satoshi built, uh, and how I plan on actually creating the true Bitcoin and killing all other cryptocurrencies, you know, if I get the chance. If somebody doesn't do it before I do. You know, if somebody does do it before I do, I'll, I'll, be, I'll definitely be involved. I'll be one of the miners. I'll spend a lot of money mining that. But, uh, yeah, like I said, uh, I don't think that Bitcoin's ever really existed, and I don't think Satoshi Nakamoto was the real Satoshi. Um, and this video explains why.